country lanes, um, anywhere in fact. I think the best thing for the car for me is looking down the bonnet at that rather nice tapering line with the cap at the end and the long road in front of me and feeling I'm lucky enough to be driving a bit of British heritage. I think that's what it's all about, really. Right, that's it. It's all back together again. It was a little bit tricky getting the little planet gears in, but it's sorted. Now, if you put the screwdriver in now, there is no movement at all of those planet gears, but it doesn't sound too good. You'd certainly hear that coming down the street, and to be honest, but the theory is, according to Les and me anyway, is that because these are fibre thrust washers here, when they've got some oil on them and it starts running, they will compress, which will give you some freedom and get rid of that grating noise. We'll soon find out when we test drive it. Right, that done. Next job I want to do is refurbish this, the cover that goes over there. Now, as you can see, this cover plate is in a very bad state and it may well be that when I blast it there are little pinholes in it which is why we're blasting it separately from the rest of the axle because if we blasted it in place and did have holes in it would have filled the differential gearbox up with the blast material so I'm doing it separately it's all been degreased and cleaned which is essential before you put it in a blast cabinet and then what I'm going to blast it with are these they're made out of processed aluminium they're called sinterballs and they are tiny little spheres blasted out under about 60 psi pressure. So plonk that in there. That's the nozzle where it's all going to come out of. Just check that's all nice and tight. Shut the door and then we can get blasting. Right. So let's have a look. And there we go. Absolutely brilliant. There are no holes in it, which is good news. So we can reuse it and paint it up. And it's got quite a good surface now for the paint to stick to. The machine itself, the reason I've got it is it's quite a big investment getting a piece of kit like this. But the amount of time it saves is absolutely fantastic. If you look at this, which is the back plate from one side of that rear axle, the time it took me to strip it off put it in the degreaser, blast it in here, and then put an etch primer coat on it last night. It took about 20 minutes. If I hadn't had the blaster and the degreaser, that would have probably taken me the best part of a couple of hours. So that means we should be able to finish this project by the end of next week. Diff cover is now in place. I've given it a temporary coat of paint just to stop it rusting, but it will be painted in combination with the whole axle when it's finished. I've also built up this end of the axle. So it's got the axle shaft, the wheel bearing, the hub here and the back plate. And I'm just going to show you how to do the other side. All the ingredients are laid out here. This is the axle shaft itself. First bit to go on there is a bearing spacer that will slot on like that. Then the bearing, which needs to be pressed on with the press behind me. Then an oil seal. Then an oil seal retainer. And then finally the hub will go on the splines like so. Then all you need is a big hammer, or hummer, as they say up in Stoke-on-Trent, and then give it a big belt like that, and it's sorted. Sadly not, we start over here. Take it very gently and you wait for a sound change, like that. See? Very metallic. And it's in place. I'll just check it is engaged. Sounds terrible, that diff. So I hope it's going to be better with some oil in it. <laughs> I really do. Last job I want to do on the axle is to repair the corroded areas on either side of the axle where the bump stop bracket sat over here when it was on the original car and the first job to affect the repair is to clean this up with a good old wire brush. The stuff I'm using to repair the axle with is an epoxy resin based repair system and this 
is the resin itself. Now this is the hardener. So I need to mix it up. It's three to one in volume of the resin to the hardener. And the hardener absolutely stinks. So if you want to join in at this stage, turn to page 27 of your program guide and there's a little scratch and sniff card there. And if you just peel that off and give it a bit of a scratch, you'll smell what the hardener smells like. We go to a lot of trouble to make you feel part of this show. And then you just basically make sure it's well pressed in. You just put too much on to start with and then you leave it a bit to go off and then it's easier to start shaping it into something that looks a bit better. Oh, no, hang on. This is the wrong end, of course. You notice that. It's this end that's drying, OK? But four hours later and you end up with this kind of thing. This is dried overnight and now all I'm doing is just sanding it down and you can see we're getting some shape in it now. So that's the finished job, but to get it to a point where you can sand it, you need to sort out Mount Everest here. So once it's gone off a little bit so you can work with it, and this is only by my experience of doing the other side, what I've done is use a nice wide wallpaper scraper and then very gently drag it over the top. Not too fast so you don't create any huge air holes to try and create the kind of rough shape you want that I can then sand later on. And there you go. Once that's gone off in about four or five hours time, I'll sand it off and then the whole axle can go off for painting. And that's one big part of the project sorted. That's it for now. We'll see you next time. Say goodbye, Pete. Bye, Pete. Bye. Wave, Pete. <laughs>